Octopass, an easy web scraper for anyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Octopass channel. In the previous session, we focused on setting up a basic data collection task, with pagination and loop playing a particularly important role. In this session, we'll dive deeper into these two features, discovering how pagination and loop can provide clever ways to expand your workflows and achieve more with your data collection. In our previous exercises, you might observe that the tip pane frequently suggests pagination methods while you're customizing a task. Pagination is the process of dividing content into separate pages, commonly seen on websites that list items, articles, or search results. Now, let's take a closer look at what these three pagination types actually are, and see how you can set them up manually in the workflow designer if you prefer not to rely on the tip pane. First of all is the next page button method. The next page method is the traditional form of pagination. It is used when the website has a clear next or arrow button for pagination. For example, as you can see on the screen, this eBay page is a typical example of such a layout, where you can click that next button to move from one page to the next to load more product listings information. In Octoparse, setting up pagination for this kind of pages pattern website is straightforward. You can simply add a loop and place the click action inside it, then place the cursor in the right place. The input box has already generated an XPath in it. In this way, the task will automatically perform the pagination step repeatedly, navigating through all pages without manual intervention. Furthermore, the number of page turns is controlled in the general section under the loop option. The number of repeats determines how many pages will be turned. That's how we set up pagination for this kind of page in the workflow designer. If you want to do it in the browser area, you can also click the next page button, select the loop click in the tips pane. A pagination loop shows up. The second approach is the load more button method. In this case, pagination requires the user to click the designated load more area. Once clicked, additional results are appended directly to the current page instead of triggering a full reload. In Octoparse, handling a load more pagination pattern is largely the same as with the former setup. If you want to do it in the browser area, you can click the load more button directly here, then choose loop click, and you will see the loop instantly appear. Of course you can also set up manually in the workflow designer. All you need to do is add a loop and drag a click inside it. However, the crucial difference is that it requires an additional XPath for the button element. Because the load more button typically appears only after some content has loaded, and its position on the page can vary, the cursor-based selection is unreliable, and we need an XPath for it. Similarly, you can also control the repeating number of page turns in the general section. Before we go further, there's a quick note on what is path. XPath is a language used to navigate and identify elements within an XML or HTML document. In web scraping, it allows tools like Octoparse to precisely locate web elements. Even if the button moves around on the page, as long as its structure in the HTML stays the same, XPath can still find it. If you're new to this, it might feel a bit tricky, but we'll keep it brief for now. Don't worry, we'll dive deeper in the following videos, showing you how to write an XPath and how it can help with more sophisticated scraping tasks. In this website, the XPath for the load more button just looks like this, we can simply put it in the XPath input box. Lastly, let's come to the infinite scrolling method. It is also noticeable that some pages don't have any buttons at all, yet new content keeps appearing as you scroll down, which offers a smooth and seamless browsing experience. In Octoparse, you can simply set up the scroll function to handle that. You can also customize the repeating number under the scroll setting, which directly controls how many times the page will scroll. That's how you set up pagination for this kind of page. So far in our discussion, pagination in Octoparse relies on a loop. And loops can do much more than just turn pages. In Octoparse, there are six built-in loop modes in the workflow designer. Let's break down each mode step by step to see how they work in practice. First up, let's talk about the single element loop. In simple terms, this loop keeps performing the same action on a single element until a certain condition is met. A classic use case is pagination, which we covered earlier, repeatedly clicking the single element of the next page position. Instead of moving through a list of items, the crawler keeps repeating the same action on one single element until the task is done. Next, let's take a look at the fixed list loop. In simple terms, this loop is meant for lists where the number of items is already set. Each element has a predefined XPath, and Octoparse processes them in order, exactly as you specify. Fixed list is quite similar to a variable list. 
It locates a list of items, which is a list of XPath queries with each XPath locating a unique element on the page. It is used when the number of elements on the page is consistent across all pages. As you input the selected fixed list XPath, Octoparse will correspondingly identify them. It highlights all matching items on the page, creates a looping container for them. Right now, you might find the idea a bit confusing for now, mainly because we haven't touched on XPath in this course yet. But we'll revisit this concept in a later lesson, with more details unpacked through customized task examples. Now, let's move on to the variable list loop. Unlike the fixed list, this loop is designed for lists where the number of items can vary. Instead of manually defining each element, Octoparse identifies the repeating pattern on the page and creates a loop that adapts to however many items are present. Sometimes you see 10 items, other times 20, depending on the page. With a variable list loop, Octoparse can handle both scenarios seamlessly without extra setup. Inside the variable list, Octoparse also creates a general XPath that matches all the elements in that list. Another powerful option is the list of URLs loop. Instead of relying on elements detected on a page, this loop is driven by a predefined list of web addresses. You can click the small button here to input your URL listings. Octoparse will open each URL in the list and process them one by one, following the same extraction workflow. This loop is perfect when you already have a set of target pages to scrape, for example, a list of product detail pages, news articles, or company profiles. No matter how different the pages look in navigation, as long as the structure inside each page is consistent, you can apply the same data extraction rules across all of them. Then comes the text list. This mode lets you loop through a list of text values. It's commonly used for entering multiple keywords into a search box or testing multiple input values. To set it up, hit the search bar in the browser and add an enter text action in a loop. Select enter text and loop and just type in your keywords in the provided bar. Then, hit the Enter key when finished entering, which tells Octoparse to automatically press Enter after typing in each keyword. You will see that the workflow designer has already generated a loop action and input the text in loop. Lastly, the scroll page loop is used for pages that load new content as you scroll, such as social media feeds, job boards, or e-commerce listings. We have demonstrated the application of scroll before. You can set how far and how often it scrolls, or stop when no new content appears, that's it. That's the six kinds of loops you can use in Octoparse to automate repetitive actions, coupled with the smart pagination feature to navigate through web pages. Together, these tools form the foundation of powerful workflows, letting you handle data collection with far less effort. In the next lesson, we'll dive deeper into XPath, the backbone of precise data extraction. Make sure to try out these techniques yourself and follow along.